Okay, guys, Sandbox 2.1.4 is upon us today. It is now live. We have the patch notes in front of us, so let's talk about it. First up for the super tuning, the Gunslinger class, Golden Gun Super, increased damage to bosses by 40%. Hot damn. That is a heck of an increase. This includes Six Shooter and Celestial Nighthawk. Thank God I recorded numbers yesterday. We'll be comparing those pre 2.1.4 numbers to today's numbers. Now, the Golden Gun Six Shooter, its base damage increased from 275 to 300 per shot and kills now return a bullet to the golden guns magazine now i'm pretty sure celestial nighthawk will still apply and work with top tree golden gun we'll have to check to see what the damage numbers look like the line em up perk got a double precision damage bonus per stack of the buff now that is a perk found on bottom tree gunslinger it states that precision hits with golden gun increases its damage and extends duration so with each precision hit we'll be gaining a buff that doubles our precision damage per stack that. I'm very curious to see if line them up can rival the damage of Celestial Nighthawk. We'll see. Practice makes perfect. Another perk found on Bottom Tree Gunslinger. The stack limit is increased from 3 to 5. Super regen modifier increased by 20%. Now this is a perk that states that enter a trance with each precision hit reducing the cooldown of your super. Also states that Knife Juggler kills Grant Super Energy. Now previously, Practice Makes Perfect stopped at three stacks. Now it's gonna go all the way up to five, on top of already getting a 20% increase in Super Regen. It could be really good, we'll have to test it out some more. Blade Barrage, Impact Damage decreased from 150 to 35. Explosion Damage increased from 150 to 250. It will now deal self damage. And they go on to give us some notes here and say that our goal for AOE supers of this type is that they incur self damage when activated too close to a target we consider blade barrage not causing self damage a bug which we are now addressing in other words hunter will know how warlocks feel when they throw a nova bomb into a wall they also fix an issue in which blade barrage projectiles could track allies so overall guys what you can get from that is that the majority of your damage is going to come from the tail end of your blade barrage super as they've significantly decreased the damage that you give out initially which is at 150 to 35 damage reduction moving on we have the hunter night stalker mobius quiver this is a perk found on bottom tree night stalker it states that tethered targets now have the full damage increase rather than needing to be tethered by multiple shadow shots additionally the shadow shot damage bonus to tether targets was also increased they then go on to state that they increased mobius quiver tether radius by 20 percent and they increased the mobius quiver tether lifetime while simultaneously making it easier to fire successive shadow shots this perk found on bottom tree night stalker stated before 2.1.4 that you fire shadow shot multiple times in rapid succession shadow shot deals massive damage against tethered enemies now that massive amount of damage really wasn't that massive and number two it had to stack on top of each other as in you didn't get the full damage immediately it wasn't until the last and final shot of your shadow shot that you actually got to see the bulk of your damage from the patch notes here it seems that as long as the targets are tethered the full damage stack will be applied as well as them also buffing shadow shot damage to tether targets now the developer commentary here states that this is step one for shadow shots and we intend to keep improving the way it works. For this pass, we focus on Mobius Quiver quality of life. We plan to continue to make it more effective and globally relevant in the future. So obviously, this is not the final stage for Mobius Quiver. I would assume that the damage is not that great, even with all the buffs that we have here, but it's good to know that Bungie's gonna keep improving it. Spectral Blade Super, bonus damage resistance while stealth decreased from 15% to 5%. While in Spectral Blades and in stealth, total damage resistance is 62 percent total super duration while invisible decreased by 3.67 seconds so if you were to pop your super and like not do anything just stand there a spectral blade super while invisible lasts 30 seconds so the duration here now is 26 seconds essentially moving on we have arc strider arc staff super heavy range and slam attack damage increased from 220 to 300 heavy palm blast attack damage increased from 400 to 700 so the heavy palm attack is almost doubled here and the heavy range and slam attack damage is also increased going to be really interesting i do have some pre 2.1.4 numbers we'll compare those numbers later this week lethal current perk bonus hit damage has been increased from 100 to 130 now lethal current is a perk found on top tree arc strider it's the one that after dodge 
dodging each arc staff hit creates a damaging lightning aftershock. Now moving on, we have Raiden Flux Exotic Armor. They actually reduce the damage here from 20% to 13.5%. This change keeps the bonus damage granted by the exotic about the same. Because this is calculated on a scalar instead of a flat number, any big changes in base damage have a large effect on the exotic. That's a shame, I was really looking forward to using Raiden Flux with the new and improved Arc Strider. Moving on, we have Titan. Sunbreaker. Sunspot damage increased from 25 to 50 per tick. Yay. Sun Warrior Perk. Buff now increases all damage output from the Sunbreaker by 20% in PvP and 25% in PvE. The buff duration has now been increased from 3 seconds to 5 seconds. So the Sun Warrior Perk, guys, on Bottom Tree Sunbreaker. It states that passing through a Sunspot causes your solar abilities to recharge faster and your super to last longer but now we're gonna get a buff in our total damage output for the duration that we're standing inside of that sunspot but even after that when that buff goes away that sun warrior perk will still be activated for five seconds now there's nothing here that's showing that it increases the damage of our allies so if we had an ally sitting in the sunspot with us i don't believe they're gonna get extra damage output but if they're a sunbreaker i don't know we'll have to test that one out burning maw the spin melee attack damage increased from 65 to 80 per hit the slam detonation radius increased from five to now six meters and the improved slam attack projectile tracking as you know guys when you slam with your burning mall super it sends out a tracking fire tornado sometimes man it tracks perfectly other times it just runs into a wall i'm actually surprised that the overhead slam didn't get a damage buff as well moving on we have the sentinel the sentinel shield super final melee combo hit damage increased from 300 to 390 damage to pve combats increased by 17 percent now that melee combo it speaks of is whenever you hit your heavy shield bash after your melee which does like the shield slam so that's what's actually getting the increase in damage here but the overall damage buff to pve combats by 17 percent doesn't look to specify that that's the heavy shield bash it seems to be for the entire sentinel super moving on we have the striker class fist of havoc super the heavy slam attack base damage decreased from 325 to 275 huh okay damage to base elite and mini boss combatants have been increased by seven percent damage to bosses increased by 23 percent damage to vehicles increased by 60 percent okay so what it looks like it's getting a damage decrease in its heavy slam attack and pvp but everywhere else it's getting a damage buff now the terminal velocity perk this is a perk found on top tree striker change the way that bonus damage from this perk is granted added a third threshold tier based on how long you're in the air before impact and before i get into these changes this is a perk that states that fist of havoc's ground slam attack leaves a damage dealing field in its wake and deals more damage the longer it's in the air what they're essentially doing here now though is they're adding three tiers of terminal velocity at tier one you'll get four hits or four arc damage pulses at tier two you'll get eight and at tier three we get 12. they also increase the damage per arc hit from 100 to 112. this is actually pretty crazy so including the damage buff that we're getting to bosses by 23 percent depending on when you activate your super if you reach tier three in that terminal velocity perk your arc field there is going to hit 12 times not only that, if you're trying to like zone someone off, keep someone off a point and say something like competitive, keep it from arming a bomb or something. If you happen to reach that tier three in terminal velocity, you'll be able to keep them off that bomb for a really long time for it to sit there and pulse up to 12 times. This one's going to be really interesting. Moving on, Code of the Juggernaut. Fist of Havoc shoulder charge energy cost reduced by 83%. So for my people that like to rock bottom tree striker, your super is going to last for a really long time now. Trample perk can now trigger the energy return every half a second up from one second. Now trample is a perk found on bottom tree striker, destroying enemies with Fist of Havoc extends its duration so again guys you're getting a reduction in energy being charged per shoulder charge in your super and we're getting a perk buff to trample allowing us to extend the duration of our supers every half a second instead of every one second moving on we've got void walker cataclysm nova bomb initial detonation damage increase from 900 to 1500 well all right then it's about time detonation radius increased from 8 to 10 meters secret projectile detonation damage increased from 205 to 300 they also improve secret projectile turning radius 
and homing to make it more consistent to use against bosses and single targets. That's the biggest problem. You can go in there and Nova Bomb a single target boss and the secret projectiles don't even go to it, which resulted in us missing out on a lot of damage there. They also fixed an issue where secret projectiles could prematurely detonate. Overall, guys, I'm excited to see what Cataclysm can do. This is top tree Void Walker. Now, moving on, Vortex Nova Bomb. Initial detonation damage increased from 900 to 1200. The linger volume damage damage increase from 10 to 23 per tick. Now this is on bottom tree void walker. Essentially when you cast your nova bomb into an enemy, it drops that vortex there that continues to do more damage. So that's getting a buff as well as the initial detonation also getting a buff. Now the nova warp super, they slightly slowed movement while charging. So when you're actually charging your super, they slow down your movement speed. The charging costs more energy. They state that initial charge costs each time you trigger your super Super increased by 60%. Wow. Sustained drain costs holding also increased by 60%. The duration of the super has been decreased by 6.8 seconds. They also decreased super damage resistance from 56 to 54%. And damage against guardians decreased by 27%. Whew. Nova Warp. Man, y'all got hit in the mouth pretty good on this one. Not gonna lie. We'll see though, man. We'll have to just check that one out. Don Blade. Daybreak Super. Increased damage against minor, major, and mini boss combatants by 43%. Okay. And they increased the duration of the super by three seconds. So we're looking at 23 seconds. Woo! Storm Collar. Storm Trance Super. Increased chain lightning maximum target count by one. For those moments when you just need to just get one more. Okay. Moving on, we have weapons to talk about. Auto Rifles. Increased base damage on rapid fire by 9%. Okay. That's pretty nasty. Increased base damage on high impact auto rifles by 5%. Increased base damage damage on adaptive auto rifles by 6%. Scout rifles. Increased base damage on lightweight scout rifles by 5%. Increased base damage on rapid fire scout rifles by 6%. Increase all scout rifle PVE damage by 10%. Now I know we're not really getting into the damage numbers themselves, but understand guys, that one 6% change to rapid scouts just turned scout rifles in that archetype into a 0.69 time to kill value in four crits. We'll get into the damage numbers a little more in depth because we're going to break this down by weapon type throughout this week but understand that those increase in damage that you see there can alter these archetypes greatly moving on sniper rifles increase base damage of rapid fire sniper rifles by eight percent you can now two shot body shot guardians in pvp grenade launchers we knew this one was going to get nerfed tweak grenade launcher projectiles to feel more consistent on direct hits so yeah mountaintop could actually be more consistent proximity grenades though can no longer impact directly this will now prevent special ammo grenade launchers from one-shotting with this perk active. Kind of a bummer. Increase ammo reserve size of special ammo grenade launchers. Increase initial spawn ammo and PvE for special ammo grenade launchers. Overall, what this is essentially going to do, guys, for those that are trying to get the one-hit kill, you're most likely going to want to use Mountaintop or maybe something like Malicious Birthright, but instead of proximity grenades, you might go like high-velocity rounds, maybe spike grenades. Who knows? We'll have to just see which one's the best now. Now, bows made the effect of draw time from bow strings more noticeable. High tension string, flexible string, elastic string, polymer string. They go on to state that the accuracy stat from high tension string was increased from 10 to 15 to better compensate for the slower draw time. Known issue though, the tooltip for high tension string was not updated to show the larger accuracy increase. This will be addressed in a future update. All right then. So for those guys that are trying to drop their draw time, these perks should be working better. I don't know. We'll have to check it out. Legend of Accuracy range increased by half a meter the pve damage though has been increased by 50 percent hot damn okay then telesto reduce base damage of each bolt by 19 percent increase optic stat from 15 to 20 to be comparable with other fusions with scope perks but the pve damage has been increased by 30 percent all right then moving on trace rifles trace rifles now gain additional ammo when pick up special ammo reduce damage output of way splitter against guardians so we're looking looking at a reduction of 19% on medium damage mode and a reduction of 27% on high damage mode. Adjustments were made to keep the damage output the same in PVE activities. 
Okay, I don't really know how much this is going to affect the time to kill value. I don't see it going any higher than 0.73. Again, though, we will see. Exotic Armor tuned energy values on shards of Galinor to accompany changes to the Blade Barrage Super. They reduced the maximum energy return from 90% to 75% of the total Super. Now only returns energy on knife impacts. Wow. Okay, then. They also reduced energy return on Gwizen Vests from 10% to 7% of the total Super. Now, the rest of the change Changes in today's patch notes are like changes to the heavy ammo spawn. We had seen that we were going to get a bump up and respawn timers for heavy ammo and control clash, survival, showdown, and in rumble. All of those things have gone into effect today. If you want to look at all of those in more depth, the link is in the description below. But guys, those are your subclass buffs and nerfs for 2.1.4, our weapon buffs and nerfs, as well as our exotic buffs and nerfs. It's a lot of them. We got our work cut out for us this week, but I'm about to go grab my last work. I got to get this gun before we get started on anything else fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right